tonight we're looking at the Raspberry Pi 3 Model A+. Plus. Now, how can the latest and greatest version of the Raspberry Pi be an A+, plus when the last greatest model was the B+. Plus? I, well, I can answer that. Can you? Well, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> A plus is just better. That's oh, like A the plus best. Is like yes. A plus. B plus. Nicely done. B plus raspberry is like pie. you could do a little better. <laughs> so like by yeah. really, what we're saying is Raspberry Pi is most improved student. Yeah. Because they keep going. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh yeah. We're they went from zero our way. to A plus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is the uh, the latest version of the Raspberry Pi line. Uh, it boasts a 64-bit quad-core processor. Okay. Just like the previous iteration, the B plus. Um, it has a different form factor. It's got dual band 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. And one of the neat things about this, if you're using the A plus for um, for developing a product. So mm -hmm. if you want to put this in a, a smart home device that you're going to be selling, for example, the Wi-Fi is already pre-certified. So oh, no. you don't have to go through the certification process. It expedites the, your ability to release your product that's using the Raspberry Pi as its okay. brain kind of thing. Oh, but it also okay. cuts your cost because you don't have to go through that approval process. Right. The Raspberry Pi 3 Model A Plus mm. is also just $25. Ooh. So, hey, if it meets your need, this is going to be the perfect thing. I'm going to head over to our unboxing table here. This was a <laughs> gift from, uh, from Marshman. Thank you, Marshman. Oh, nice. And there it is, the Raspberry Pi 3 Model A+. Plus. Uh, let's get right into the box and get a look at it. As I mentioned, it's got a 1.4 gigahertz Cortex-A53 64-bit uh, quad-core processor. Now, you notice right away that the form factor is different from a standard Raspberry Pi, uh, like the B+, Plus, for example. Let's get out our trusty ruler here, make sure I've got the right side here, because I always do this. This is the craziest ruler, folks. What do we have? We have... Turn it over. 65 millimeters, about two and a half inches, a little more than that. Um, now, I can see... It, it looks like a square, but in my hand, this side is definitely a little bit shorter, but yeah, 56 millimeters, about 2.2 inches this way. And so the form factor is definitely a little bit different for you. So we've got um, a couple of interesting uh, facts about this board. First of all, the one thing that I notice right out of the box, this is the first time I've had it out, is that there is no Ethernet. But as I mentioned, it does have dual band 2.4 and 5 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi. It's got BGN and AC compatibility. It's got Bluetooth 4.2. And it's got a full-size 40-pin GPIO uh, extended connector as well. So if you want to use this for prototyping or building your product, this is the perfect little board as long as you don't need Ethernet. It has a single USB 2 port. And working our way around the board, we've got our audio um, jack here as well, uh, which doubles as video, composite video. So if you've got the cable with the yellow um, end on it, you'll be able to pull RCA video off of that as well. Uh, we've got a camera connector. We've got a couple of different uh, connectors there, display as well. We've got full-sized HDMI. We've got the power input, which is 5 volts, 2.5 amp, uh, right here, which is just the USB micro working our way around. Uh, we've got the improved Wi-Fi chip, the processor there. On the other side, we can see a couple of, uh, well, the board is double-sided, and then we've got the SD card uh, port here. So that's for, your, uh, for booting your operating system, as well as the storage itself. So not a lot to see, because we're so used to these single board computers, and this one is kind of a little bit streamlined, a little bit stripped down, if you will. Um, but definitely, as a prototyping board or something that is going to power a device that you're creating, manufacturing, this is going to be really, really cool, again, as long as you do not need that uh, Ethernet connectivity. That said, we do have a USB 2 port, so uh, presumably we could use uh, an Ethernet USB adapter. Uh, in order to gain that if we'd like. What else is in the box, if anything? Nothing at all. There you go, just the instruction manual, and that's it. That's the model A plus Raspberry Pi 3. We're going to be taking a look at that, getting the giggle score off of that in the next couple of weeks' time. There you have it. What do you think of that? Uh, that's very nice. Now, one thing... Uh chat room picked up on? Yes. 65 by 56 millimeters, not centimeters. 
millimeters. <laughs> that's, that's a big <laughs> SBC. <laughs> it's okay. It's, it's about this. <laughs> We're using a special telescopic lens that's here. Right. Thank yeah. you very much. Yes. So, I am a yeah. giant. It is not quite that big. <laughs> yeah. But it's still very nice. And, the, and then there was a question about uh, micro SD. It is micro SD. Okay. If I said SD, that's that's what I mean. It's a yeah, micro, it's micro SD. SD. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Very um, cool. And of course, we're open to any other questions. We are going to be testing that, as I mentioned, with the Giggle Score. We're going to be putting that up against a couple of other boards as well. Very interested in seeing how it performs. And interestingly enough, in the preliminary tests that we've been seeing in the community, I do believe that it is performing better than a Raspberry Pi 3B+. Plus. Now, I say that I as a preliminary. Sure. Yeah, you, you kind of think so, as it's, it's newer and everything else. But it does have half of the RAM. So we've got to keep right. that in mind. Okay, that's true. Um, so if you're using it for... Um, like it's not something that you're going to be using for a RetroPie system or, or probably not for NEMS Linux or anything that requires a gig plus. Like that one gig of a Raspberry Pi 3B plus Makes, is really yeah. low already. So cut that in half. And now, okay, what, what is it good for? What can it be used for? Um, there are certain applications, of course, that are going to be really, really good for this board, mm -hmm. especially at the price point of 25 bucks. Cool, yeah. exactly. That's going to yeah. be pretty sleek. Very nice. Now, the one thing about it that kind of shocked me is that there was no Ethernet port. Yeah. Like, that, to me, is a drawback. Because I like to be hardwired in at home. Absolutely. I have yeah. better mm -hmm. control with the data that's being sent when it's mm -hmm. over Ethernet as opposed to just out there in the Wi-Fi world. Mm -hmm. So why would they eliminate the Ethernet on it? Cut cost. Mm. Cut the okay. underlying price of the board. Okay. So... They're presuming that this is going to be something of a smart home device. So if I'm going to build something and create something from this device, use this as my prototyping board, it's going to be Wi-Fi connected. Right. You, you know, all of the, the devices that we use that are smart home, they're all Wi-Fi. Yeah, you, right. don't, you don't plug an Ethernet cable into uh, an Amazon Echo. True. Right? It just, that's not how it works. So, yeah, it's not great for streaming video because it is Wi-Fi and it's limited to the, the throughput of Wi-Fi. Now, it is a pretty decent Wi-Fi chip, but I have found that Raspberry Pi Wi-Fi has been eh, a little yeah. substandard. Right. Um, but again, it's what is it for? What is the Raspberry Pi for? That's and true. that's where it really does well in that kind of manufacturing, building something, learning, education, um, robots, for example. Using this as a brain for a robot with Wi-Fi oh, built true. in. Yeah, that'd work. Uh, it's a smaller form factor. It's a little bit faster. Doesn't have a lot of RAM, but doesn't need it when it's just running some Python. Um, and... Uh, and it would do very, very well in that scenario, I hmm. think. Cool. So it boils down to what you want to use it for. I'm excited to see the Giggle score. Mm -hmm. I am too. You can get one at cat5.tv slash pi. Check them out and let us know what you think would be the best option. As I mentioned, Jeff, you can presumably use a USB adapter to get Ethernet if you right. absolutely needed it. Um, but that's not the intention of this board. No. With you know, keeping the cost down at 25 bucks. I think that's pretty cool.